There are a lot of Canadians right now who do not support the government, who would like a chance to voice that. Is there going to be a point in time which you say exactly to Canadians what you expect in return, or are you just going to keep keeping the Liberals in power? Ryan's home from Ottawa, Pharmacare received royal assent, the NDP are not broke, and their national director spoke today with Vashi Kapalos. What a day. Let's take a look. So after my update yesterday, uh, we received an email this morning from our contacts in the Senate, and uh, we were informed that there was going to be a little bit of a delay for Pharmacare receiving royal assent because uh, they still needed to vote uh on the bill after third reading so the fact that they are rushing that through today to actually get it voted on today as well as receiving royal assent is a bit peculiar yeah they don't typically receive royal assent the same day that third reading is completed right and based on our conversations with some of the mps um typically typically the governor general doesn't usually sign all of the legislation or really any of the legislation until late in the fall after everything has kind of gone through the Senate and, and run its course. Well, that's because they want to complete or almost complete the fall session. Why would you start signing things a month in? Not even a month in. It's only been a few weeks. Well, and it makes you think if the liberals are seeing nothing is happening in the House and seems like the Senate is kind of a debacle. They can't agree on what to actually talk about. Uh, I'm wondering if they're thinking, well, maybe the fall session is going to end sooner than later. But uh, what we wanted to do is show you something that I don't think you probably have seen before. I know, I definitely haven't. Um, and what this is, is this is what happens in the Senate when a bill or bills receives royal assent. Let's take a look. Honourable Senators, the following communication has been received from Government House, October 10th, 2024. Madam Speaker, I have the honour to inform you that the Right Honourable Mary May Simon, Governor General of Canada, signified royal assent by written declaration to the bills listed in the schedule to this letter on the 10th day of October 2024 at 6.26pm. Yours sincerely, Ken McKillop, Secretary to the Governor General. Schedule bills assented to Thursday, October 10, 2024, an act to amend the criminal code and to make consequential amendments to another act, interim release and domestic violence rec rec recognizance, recognizance merci, orders, Bill S205 and an act to amend the criminal code and to make consequential amendments to other acts, child sexual abuse and se exploitation material, Bill C-291, an act respecting Pharmacare, Bill C-64. So, it's not fancy, but that's the way it works. Um, so, that's it folks, Bill C-64 has received royal assent if Parliament were prorogued today, or, or right now, if an election were called right now, Bill C-64, an act respecting Pharmacare, <laughs> this silly, <laughs> stupid bill, um, it remains intact. So um, the NDP don't have to worry about voting non-confidence now in order to maintain their Pharmacare bill. So that's, uh, that's something interesting. And... You know, a lot of this is happening at a very peculiar time, as uh, as I talked about on my update yesterday. But let's uh, let's keep going because now that that has you know happened, questions are coming to the NDP now. The bloc has already been making it pretty clear that they are getting closer and closer and cuddling up to the Conservatives in trying to take down this government. So Anne McGrath, the national. Uh, campaign director for or national director for the NDP went on CTV to speak with Vashi Kapalos. Now you will recognize her from the coverage that we had of the NDP national convention, which was last October. 
You, you, you remember that when they promised to all of their uh, all of their party that we will accept nothing less than universal single pair farmer care for all. Right. And you just know that they're going to go back to their base and say, like, look at this. We got royal assent on our farmer care bill. If you actually read the farmer care bill, there is nothing in there about giving Canadians farmer care. It's all about. Uh, in a year from now, because it's just received Royal Assent today, so October 10th, 2025, they have to have a framework in place and they have to uh, implement another bill for the actual PharmaCare part. Right. And they have to work with all the provinces, all of which, except for the NDP ones, are saying, this is stupid. We already have PharmaCare infrastructure and PharmaCare administration within the province. Why are you duplicating this? So anyway... Let's get to Anne McGrath, shall we? Parliament remains gridlocked at this hour with government business on hold for days now as the opposition demands the release of unredacted documents related to a now defunct green tech fund that the Auditor General found was mired in conflict of interest issues and the Liberals refused to comply, citing the protection of charter rights. The Liberals need at least one opposition party to play Paul with them, Paul, pardon me, at, with them to end the filibuster debate and resume work in the House and... This, of course, is all playing out as the Liberals stare down the barrel of a tight Bloc Québécois deadline to meet demands like boosting old age security that so far the feds are not supporting. Their only other potential dance partner is the NDP, who have yet to put any demands, as you heard from Mr. Singh, on the table. Have you asked for anything from the Liberals to say that you'll give them their support going forward if they meet some new demands so that way they don't have to rely on the Bloc Québécois? No. Haven't asked for anything. No. Them. The ongoing discussions with the House Leader, that is normal, but there's been no discussion between me and the Prime Minister. There's been no, nothing I've been putting on the table, nor has the Prime Minister put on the table. I've said very clearly, we're not looking for a new deal. We tore up the agreement. There will be no new deal. We're not negotiating a new deal. Uh, there is nothing of that nature. So he's just going to, what, give his support away for, for free? For nothing. Right? This is this is worse, folks. This, this is, is worse. worse than the agreement. <laughs> We've torn up the agreement. He doesn't deserve another chance. He's a terrible leader. Okay, so you've you've voted confidence for them twice now, and at least the block came out and said, We are only going to vote confidence if you uh, capitulate to these demands. Well, they voted confidence once to give the Liberals, or Time. I suppose twice, technically, yes. to give the Liberals the opportunity to give their bill uh, royal recommendation. And now they're saying that they're not getting anything out of this Liberal government, so they're ready to vote down the Liberals. Right. Meanwhile, you have Jagmeet saying, we tore up the agreement, and then we're voting confidence twice, and they're being asked, so what are you asking for them? Nothing. Nothing, we're just going to vote on a case-by-case -case basis. Like, how can you have confidence in a government that is embroiled in a $400 million scandal? And can't can't do anything in the House. And no. Ha have you seen committee lately? <laughs> like, yeah, you, we're going to get to that. Don't you worry, folks. Ryan's home now. We're going to get to that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> check out our next video when uh, when we drop that about committee. But the, the whole place is just a dysfunctional mess. And the great thing is, is the Conservatives are not letting go. They are not letting the government uh, continue on with this stupid charade until the documents actually get produced. And I guess we'll give Vashi a little credit. At least CTV mentioned that there's a scandal on this. <laughs> um, but... Anyhow, let's continue. With us now is the person who negotiated the now ripped up deal that saw the NDP support the Liberals for about two and a half years in exchange for action on some key policy issues, including dental care and pharmacare. NDP National Director Anne McGrath is with us live. Hi, Anne. Good Hi. to see you. Good to see you. Okay, help me understand. Mr. Singh was just saying I haven't put anything specific on the table. On Let's separate the issues, the first being sort of the paralysis in the House right now. If the Liberals wanted to force closure on the debate that's happening right now, they would need another party to, to help them. Is the NDP entertaining discussions on that? Uh, well, I don't know what the discussions have been between the House leaders at all. Uh, I do know that, that there are ways out of this, uh, uh, but they require a little bit of maturity, I think, on the part of both the government and the opposition, uh, the official opposition. I, I think that what's happening in the House right now is shameful, it's wasteful, it's a misuse of taxpayers' dollars, and I'm surprised that the Conservatives are actually doing what they're doing, because they're supposed to be the ones that are the big guardians of the public purse. Um, and so, you know, and, and it's, it's to no avail. 
fail. It's not like they're getting anywhere with any of it. And the Liberals have these uh, motions that were passed that, uh, that, that are demanding the uh, disclosure of documents, and they, they could do something about that. They could find a way to disclose the documents. So I think that, I personally think that the onus is on the government and the opposition to actually come to some kind of a, 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 an agreement or uh, something to actually move this forward. I can't imagine that either party wants this, to, certainly the Liberals don't, but I don't know why the Conservatives would want to either. I think some of their supporters might be looking at this and wondering what the heck is going on. You know what I love when politicians and politician adjacents, I suppose, uh, confuse green dollars with brown dollars? Yes. She's saying that, oh, well, you know, the conservatives are wasting money by holding up the house like this. Um, okay, that's brown dollars. Like the conservatives, the liberals, the bloc, all the MPs, they're going to get paid either way, right? So b before we go forward, we should explain the difference between green dollars and brown dollars. We use this in, uh, uh, in corporations all the time. So green dollars, what that means is money that you are actually spending, it's you know, you, you notice it missing from your budget. So, you know, um, in terms of this, the brown dollars are are dollars that will be spent anyway and you won't miss. So, like salaries. Right. So all of these MP, uh, MPs are getting paid no matter what they talk about. And they get paid the exact same amount no matter what they talk about. And this government is on a finite schedule. So even if this this proceeding where they do nothing goes all the way until October of next year, they still get paid the same uh, whether they discuss that or if they are discussing five different bills every day. So that's brown dollars. So green dollars is if they were discussing this and they started hiring a whole bunch of more people as a result of this. So, you know, they're spending more money than you actually anticipated. It's money that wouldn't have been spent whether you're doing the same thing or well, not. Well, what I was going to say was that McGrath is accusing the Conservatives of wasting money, brown dollars in this case, MP salaries, uh, speaker salaries, page salaries, everybody who's in that house, their salaries, while they are actually trying to protect green dollars from going out the door to SCTC. Right. Or they're even trying to recover some of that. They're trying to get justice for Canadians whose green dollars in tax money have disappeared through the SDTC scandal. Well, and this is this is actually, you know, going to become the Achilles heel, of the NDP. If they're not careful, this position of alleged neutrality here, um, n never mind the fact that the NDP voted with the Conservatives and voted with the Bloc on this motion of privilege. Let's mm -hmm. let's not forget that. And you know, what does she want the conservatives to do? Just say, okay, you know, um, we're we're just going to put our motion to bed and uh, and then that's it. So what you you want the liberals to just say, oh okay, thanks for stopping that. We're still not gonna give you the documents. Like th that's ridiculous. That is absolutely r ridiculous. It's like, you know, Johnny and, and Jane, um, they each have each other's toy. Jane has Johnny's bear and Johnny has Jane's doll. And Jane says, well, give me my doll and then maybe I'll give you your bear. And so Johnny says, here's your doll. And then Jane says, thanks and walks away. Like that. that's basically what would happen here. So this this silly position that Anne is postulating here and she knows darn well she knows darn well um it, it just doesn't make sense and all that shows here is the block because the block support the conservatives in, in in what's going on here all it shows is now it's only the block and the conservatives that want to get this money back because the NDP are actually taking this ridiculous narrative now the question was on motion of closure so you may you may have just glazed over that so what the uh, liberals can do is they can actually put forth a motion to close debate on what the conservatives are actually talking about the uh, the motion of privilege and if the ndp or the bloc vote with them that then comes then to over. a conclusion yeah. but the ndp have said well no we're not going to do that right 
Like the well, it would look really bad. It would look terrible. It would look bad for the liberals putting forth this motion of closure to stop debate on a motion of privilege regarding them not giving this paperwork over to the RCMP. That's number one. But also it would look terrible if the NDP, who voted alongside the conservatives in the bloc to get this report to hand over to the RCMP, then turned around and supported the Liberals with a, a motion of closure. And say, never mind, we don't want it. Yeah, like it would look <laughs> horrible, horrible. And, and, and Canadians would have every right to question them over it. And this is where, like, as, as stupid as we may think the NDP strategy is, I don't think they're that stupid. And people may say, you underestimate them. <laughs> I don't think they're that stupid. Well, I don't know. It, it sounded like McGrath was the one who came up with this whole uh, confidence and supply agreement with uh, with for the, the pharma care and, and the dental plan. Like, that was stupid. I think, like, from what I can see, both parties are fairly dug in in their position, and they're very different. The Conservatives are saying you're holding stuff back because you want to conceal what's in those documents. The Liberals are saying it would be a breach of charter rights if we did hand them over and set a precedent that, that we essentially don't want to set. And I think because of that impasse is why I direct the question at the NDP. Do I garner from your response that uh, your party doesn't intend to wade in one way or the other? We, I mean, we've, we've been saying uh, quite clearly that, that, that this, is, this is an abuse. This is childish. This is like playing in a sandbox. It's children, you know, children playing in a sandbox. The Conservatives should stop this filibuster, uh, this, this absolute paralysis that's set in. And the Liberals should comply with the uh, motions that have been passed in the House of Commons. I think that that's pretty clear. And this is not the first time this has happened. I mean, it's accelerated to a particular point right now. But in the past, there have been situations like this, whether it was around <laughs> We Charity or other, or you know, or, or foreign interference, or any number of other things. I think that there is a tendency to withhold on the part of the Liberal government, and there is a tendency on the part of the Conservatives to be very dramatic and kind of flamboyant and a bit histrionic, in my view, in the way that they uh, that they deal with that. Is she serious? Oh, the Liberal government has a tendency to withhold, you know, evidence of its wrongdoings of what may or may not be illegal activity we don't know yet but the conservatives are uh, overly sensationalist about it um, uh canadians everywhere should be overly sensationalist about this this is very upsetting that this government is taking money out of your pocket to line the pockets of their buddies well and let's just go through Anne mcgrath's examples okay so her argument is that the conservatives and canadians shouldn't be overly concerned and dramatic about the fact that in the We Charity scandal, Trudeau awarded a $1 billion fund. With a B. $1 billion fund to the We Charity in payment or as a, as a result of the We Charity giving him and his family hundreds of thousands of dollars in speaking fees. So let's get that number one. Number two, so we shouldn't be worried about that. Uh, number two, foreign interference. So. The NDP, you know, loves to, you know, cock its head up and crow that they're the ones that have been calling for a public inquiry this whole time because the Liberal government was hiding documents. You could call that sensational, but, you know, we shouldn't really worry about foreign interference. Never mind the fact that what we learned is there's 11 MPs, current or, pa or, or past, that were actively collaborating with foreign governments in order to interfere in our democracy. So we shouldn't shouldn't you know be too worried about that. Um, then there's the Winnipeg lab scandal. Shouldn't be too worried about that, where two Chinese agents were working in one of our top labs. Or, our only our level own, four biosecurity lab. In which they took samples and transmitted a whole bunch of information back to China. Um, so we're not gonna worry about that. And the government even tried to sue Anthony Rota because he was going for the documents and ordering them to produce them. And then all of a sudden we ended up in an election. Hmm. And now we have $400 million, potentially upwards of $800 million, completely misspent, misallocated to Trudeau liberal cronies as a result of the SDTC scandal. But, you know, let's not quibble about a mere $800 million, right? And these are your examples, okay? And you're trying to say that the conservatives are overreacting about it. But at the same token, you're saying, but you know, this liberal government has a tendency to withhold documents. Well, the conservatives haven't done what they're doing. 
until now. So you can call that escalation because nothing else has worked. So now they've said, fine, we're taking control of Parliament. And now they have. It well, is firmly within their hands. And if the Liberals hand those documents over, All guess what's going to stop? <laughs> right. All the stops. Right. So, hmm. And, if, and, and here's, here's the other bizarre argument. So the Liberals... First counter to to this is well we've we've given over the documents to the RCMP no you which, haven't which led to this privileged motion in the first place they're not redacted so now they say well if we hand over those unredacted documents that violates charter rights okay so wait a minute why didn't it violate charter rights before because when they were redacted, they redacted them. <laughs> right like this is this is insane they're trying to hide something this government really is trying to hide something because it's gone almost two full weeks now without being able to put forward any legislation they get pissed off when the conservatives filibuster for a single day and they've been filibustering for almost two weeks well and the conservatives something's up the conservatives aren't letting this go and and what happened is the conservatives actually ran out of speakers on on their on their motion and so in order to keep going they put in an amendment and then they ran out of speakers and so they said oh well we need more speakers well i guess we're going to introduce another amendment and now we're going to debate that so so yeah they are filibustering and that's why the house is seized but at the same time if the government just hands over those documents, all of this goes away. Yeah, and complies with the order of their own guy. To be clear, though, if the Liberals want the NDP's help to force closure without handing over those documents, is the NDP prepared to talk about that or is that ruled out? I don't think this is an area where, uh, like, I mean, we're definitely not involved in any negotiations. I think that people have been asking about that. There are no negotiations going on uh, uh, with anyone, actually, right now. Uh, but we are playing our role, which is as has historically been our role, which is to be the adults in the House. So I'm quite confident that the that our House leader and 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 our whip will be having discussions with the other with the other parties to see uh, if there is a way out of this impasse. Separating the impasse from the larger context against which we're discussing all of this, which is whether or not the government actually stays in power or whether there's an early election. Are you involved in conversations about uh, you know, it, you know, in exchange for pol more policy priorities that, that your party would identify, supporting the government to ensure that there is not an election? Well, in a traditional minority parliament, which is what we were in before the confidence and supply agreement, uh, there were moments where there were uh, uh, matters of confidence before the House, and we pushed the government to either do more or do something else. And, and in exchange for that, we did uh, end up voting confidence. Uh, right now, we have some very important uh, measures that, that we've been pushing for that we want to see accomplished. You know, the negotiations with the provinces around the Pharmacare, uh, Pharmacare Act that, that is being passed, um, uh, further development of the dental care program, and then there's a whole bunch of other things uh, that I think are, are really important there. Prior to the confidence supply agreement, when COVID was on, for instance, the Liberals proposed very inadequate um, uh, payments for CERB, and we fought to have that doubled. And so, you know, we, we were able to accomplish some things in that period of time. So you can accomplish things uh, inside and outside of an agreement. And right now we're focused on accomplishing things uh, probably a bit more publicly. And uh, we, we intend to see uh, Parliament. Our, our hope is that Parliament can actually uh, act on things that are important to Canadians, like improving health care. So here's the interesting thing about what Anne McGrath just said. When she was referring to what happened in COVID and CERB and all that stuff. That was all legislation and it was all supply based. There's not gonna be any legislation or supply in the next couple of months about negotiating with provinces on pharmacare. That's not votes, that's not motions, that's, that's not supply. So it's interesting that she's trying to compare the two. Um, how are you going to force the government to negotiate with the provinces? The issue isn't actually going to be forcing the government to negotiate with the provinces. The issue is going to be trying to force the provinces to negotiate with the government. That's going to be the issue here. And you can't, you can't force them to do that. So it, it's an interesting reach that, uh, that she's trying to make. The, the issue with the NDP is... Every bit of legislation, say for one, this, you know, electoral reform, all of that is done. Like all, their, their entire supply and confidence agreement, it's basically all done. It's garbage, but it's basically all done. The only thing that's quote unquote left is implementing the next phase of dental care, which was slated to happen next year. So that's it. So 
Um, but it's also interesting that um, she also essentially said, sounds to me that if there was a motion to close the debate that the conservatives are, are perpetuating here, sounds like they're going to abstain. That's what it sounds like to me. In which case, the conservatives and bloc would vote together and the liberals would lose. So No, because they would need... Okay, if the NDP abstain, and we talked about this on our live stream the other night, uh, we talked about it in the context of a confidence bill, but it really could be any bill or motion um, numbers-wise. So the bloc and the conservatives would need, I think it was at least two or three other members from somewhere in the house whether that's green or independents to vote with them in order to beat just the liberals yeah that's and, true and that's assuming that the ndp abstain which means they don't vote yes and they don't vote no so so let me ask you then more specifically because i get in general terms the the priorities that that you've identified and there's stuff that your party has talked about and mr singh has talked about frequently the reason i guess i'm asking at this juncture is because of what the block has so specifically stipulated and laid on the table and they have said if it doesn't come true which it seems like it's not going to that they're going to work with other parties to bring down the government which leaves your party as the one that would support the government to keep them in power the accusation for example from the tories is that you're going to do that no matter what because there's no way you're prepared to fight an election and that you'd lose if you know in a big way if the election were to happen anytime soon is there going to be some sort of public, uh, you know, proclaimment by Mr. Singh, that, like a la Mr. Blanchet, this is what we want in exchange, or are you just going to keep supporting them? At well, all? I think what we've seen from what Mr. Blanchet has done is that he's shown themsel- them to be a bit of a paper tiger. Um, you know, all the way through this parliament, they have accomplished nothing for Quebec, or, or, which is their constituency. They've accomplished absolutely nothing. And now they have kind of, I think, mishandled this entire, this entire situation by putting an arbitrary deadline, by, by not negotiating, by actually, you know, just by the way that they've done all of this. And, and, and I, I, I don't think, I think it's going to backfire on them. I think in terms but of... But maybe they're not afraid of going to an election. <laughs> I, I find it very humorous. It doesn't matter if it's an NDP panelist, an NDP strategist, or the NDP national d- director. It's basically only the NDP that says that the bloc have misplayed this. Every other person that you talk to has actually said, the bloc has played this brilliantly. That's what they've said. Because guess what? The bloc have gone up six points since the summer. That would tell me they did a pretty good job here. Well, and they only run in one province. So, I mean, if they're going up and earning seats, then uh, they're doing a good job. Well, and the fact that they've, she's right, the Blaca haven't really been able to do a lot in this government. So the fact that in a matter of two months, they've managed to increase their polling by six points with one political maneuver, that's a win for the Bloc. Oh, yeah. So... You know, and I think that I think they're just bitter that the uh, uh, that the NDP points haven't gone up by six points. No, because again, um, the Liberals are just bleeding support, and you would think that the obvious choice would be the NDP because they're the other leftist party. However, the Conservatives are eating their lunch, and that's because of these silly games that Jagmeet Singh and very obviously McGrath are playing. Well, and the other interesting thing is that Nano's released yet another poll. Uh, we don't have the uh, the actual graphics for you, but um, the the NDP are now back behind the Liberals in the Lant Nanos poll, where you know they were reversed in the previous one. So you now see people saying, "Oh, confidence supply agreement kind of ripped up." Okay, you know we'll take another look at you. Oh, you voted confidence for the government in in two consecutive confidence votes. Never mind. Canadians want an election, and they are mad at the NDP for not giving them one. Uh, I don't think they want to go to an election. Uh, I don't think that that's. Uh, I think the only ones in the in the house that really want to go to an election are the Conservatives, probably. But uh, but I, I don't I don't think that that's the case. I don't think it's that. I think it's that they 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 don't necessarily uh, they don't necessarily have the inclination to figure out how to actually get something done. And I don't, and, and I think this deadline is, a, it's an arbitrary, ridiculous deadline in my view. And I think that they've just mishandled the entire thing. So, so again, though, back, circling back to what I asked though, is there gonna come a point, putting the deadline aside, at which you are, you know, your party is going to stipulate, specifically for Canadians, what you expect in exchange for your support? And again, I'll frame it against the backdrop of 
There are a lot of Canadians right now who do not support the government, who would like a chance to voice that. The criticism levied at your party is you don't have enough money to go to the election. You're polling, yes, better than you were a few weeks ago when before that deal was ripped off. But still, uh, that same poll that, that showed you ahead of the Liberals outside of Quebec puts you 23 points behind or 24 points behind the Conservatives nationally. Is there going to be a point in time which you say exactly to Canadians what you expect in return, or are you just going to keep keeping the Liberals in power? I Great question, Bashi. <laughs> well, and this is the, this is the problem, and this is where what we said would happen when Jagmeet ripped up the agreement. He's so stupid. Um, now, was it him or was it McGrath that instructed him to? Because she seems like the architect of the agreement in the first place. Well, m maybe, maybe she's their, she's strategist. <laughs> in which case, they're both I mean, stupid. Yeah, I was going to say neither of them are good political strategists. <laughs> Because here's the thing. Okay, so we ripped up the agreement, but now we're going to go back to voting confidently. It, it's it's such a contradiction. And the other problem is, is they now cannot publicly say, well, you know, we want this in order to vote non-confidence because everyone's going to be like, but you just said, you said that you're 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 not going to be asking for anything. They've painted themselves into a corner. Oh, massive corner, like. Jagmeet said over and over again, we are not going to be signing a new deal. There will be new deal. Okay, so that means that you're not going to ask for any, anything, right? Because if you did, then that would be a deal. So what? You're just going to give them your support for free now. Oh, wait, wait, maybe your pension. Hmm. But this is the thing. How many other of the liberal or the NDP caucus are going to be proud to just back their leader for him to get his pension while they all get their asses kicked in the polls. Yeah, especially because it appears, maybe they are, maybe they're not, but it appears to the Canadian public that they are supporting the Liberals through this scandal where the Liberals have misappropriated over or close to $400 million of taxpayer money. Well, and again, the next confidence vote that the Conservatives raise, I guarantee you, and this is what we said all along, is that it's going to include the SDTC scandal as its centerpiece in terms of non-confidence and the fact that the government can't get anything done in the House and never mind all the other scandals. So they're going to be putting that right in front of the NDP. And if the NDP support the government through that, the Bloc and the Conservatives are just going to be saying pension, 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 and be throwing that at Jagmeet and just watch the polls then. We'll just say for the record, uh, for we, have, we are completely debt free. We have actually more money than we had in the last two elections. So, but your fundraising is very low compared to the Conservatives. Not nine million between slow. April and June. Everybody's is low compared what? to the Conservatives. Okay, fair point. But <laughs> okay, there we have it. So this is another point. Um, but Anne McGrath is actually telling the truth in this one. You know, somebody for ring once? a bell. Ring yeah. a bell. Um, and this is what we've been saying to, to everybody who's been questioning us. Everyone's saying, well, the NDP doesn't have any money. The NDP never has any money. Like, this is not But new. they have more than usual right now. <laughs> yeah, they, they have more, they have more, less money. They're just not as broke as they as usually usual. are. Um, but they also own the Jack Layton building in downtown Ottawa. $12 million. Last time they mortgaged it, it was worth $12 million. It's probably even higher now. And they've paid off their election debts, which means that they have uh, repaid that mortgage on that building. So they can just remortgage it again. And this is what we keep telling people. So um, do they have a lot of liquid cash in their accounts right now? No. no. But they're one of the only parties, if not the only party, that has a $12 million asset. And they mortgage that every single election. Now, the other thing is, is the Conservatives may have something like $50, $60 million uh, in their account. And the Liberals may have like 15 million and the NDP has like 300,000. But when an election happens, all the parties are on the same playing field. All the parties are only allowed to spend X amount of dollars on an election campaign. They cannot spend more than that. Right, and it's dependent on how many candidates they run. So if they run all 343 candidates, then they can spend the maximum amount. This is why we had dispelled those rumors about um, uh, the the liberals or the NDP only running one candidate per riding like you wouldn't have liberal and NDP on the same ballot you would only have one or the other because you wouldn't be able to spend nearly as much right so imagine that imagine the liberals run candidates in half the ridings and the NDP run candidates in half the ridings that means both of them can only spend half as much as the conservatives yeah so how are you going to figure that one out anyhow um, so this is what the NDP do every election they mortgage the building, 
They take the amount of money out of the uh, uh, for the value of the mortgage that they're allowed to spend during the election, and then they spend the next four years paying it off. So there you go. But still, it's, it's, it's essentially another proof point that you don't want to go to an election. Um, not necessarily, no. I mean, I've been in elections where we have won and, and spent like 10 times less than the party that was supposed to win. Uh, so, I, I mean, money is important. And I, you know, think, you know, you have to fundraise, you have to do all of that kind of work. But it's not the only indicator of success. Uh, if you look back, for instance, at 2011, when we won 103 seats, we were not spending at nearly the level of any of the other parties. So it's not just about money in elections. We are ready to go in elections. We have always been ready to go, go, go into an election. Uh, I have never known us not to be ready to go into an election. Um, and, and, you know, we're ready now. I don't think that's the issue. I think that the issue is uh, what is the best thing for Canadians? What do and, we, and, what do and we, will what you can we make accomplish? that clear to Canadians? Like what you would like to accomplish with the power that this impasse with the bloc is going to grant you, essentially? I think, I think we're going to have to. I think that, and, and, and I mean, we have always been very, very clear with Canadians about what our priorities are and what we want. Uh, we've done it. Uh, we've done it in, in majority parliaments, minority parliaments, and in parliaments like the one that we've just come through. So is it coming soon? <laughs> Will Mr. Singh be giving us a different answer than the one he has the past few days anytime soon? Well, I he's giving you the answer, that, that we, which is where we're at right now. And actually, right now, uh, there, as I said, there's no negotiations going on. I think, like most Canadians, we're watching what's happening in Parliament with a little bit of disbelief. Like, there are actually not really words to describe how ridiculous this situation is. I watched parts of the Public Accounts Committee yesterday don't ask me why. I was going to say, <laughs> what, a, what a barn burner of a day, Anne. Yeah. I know. But, but it's unbelievable. I mean, I, I just think that if I were uh, a Conservative MP, which, thank God, I never have been and never would be, uh, but if I were, I would be probably, uh, re, you know, kind of pushing back against being asked to do the kinds of things that, that they're doing in committee and in the House. I mean, just so I guess Anne never likes to be part of the winning team. Just you saying. know, she doesn't have the fortitude to be a conservative MP. No, Sorry. and and she and here's the thing, um, the NDP doesn't know what it means to be an opposition party. No, they don't. And because they've been tethered to the government for almost this entire parliament. Well, and this is why the NDP just watch they are going to now start losing votes in Quebec in droves because people are going to be watching the block you know, standing up to the Liberals, mm -hmm. shaking their fist and trying to bring them down because they didn't get the, the demands from the Liberals and what they wanted. And the NDP are going to be like, oh, guys, um, what, what are we supposed to do here? We're we got here. two classes of medication. Yeah. That's what we got. Huzzah. And we got birth control for people. Hooray. Uh, and so, so this is what they're going to be looking at. Now, the NDP have had opportunity after opportunity after opportunity to actually be the hero um, and the problem is if Canadians are going to look at them now and they're just going to be like, okay, are you going to be forced into joining the opposition parties or are you going to be complete sellouts and complete voting and continue voting for the government? Like, just watch. If, if they vote against the next confidence vote that includes all of these scandals in the justification for it, oh my goodness. Like, you've been, if, if you're wondering what the Conservatives are saving up all of this money for because some of you may be asking well if you can only spend a certain amount in elections why are the conservatives you know um banking all this money because leading up to an election you can spend however much that you want is it however much you want yes. or is okay <laughs> you can spend however much you want leading up to an election it's just during the election period once an election spend... is called yeah there, okay. there's a finite amount so if if the ndp votes confidence I imagine you're going to see ad after ad after ad after ad just going after them. Well, we're already hearing ads on the radio. And I mean, I don't know how many people listen to radio anymore. We do, but... Uh, and the you only know. ads you're hearing is from the conservatives. <laughs> yeah, and that's what I mean. And, and we're also seeing ads played on our videos from the conservative party. You, so. you may have seen some already in this video. So. <laughs> but... Um, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the, the, the noose is tightening, it's squeezing, and the NDP better make some decisions and they better make it quick because they're seeing, you know, the bloc made their intentions clear, public proclamation, sticking to it, and then following through. You want to know what I think is going to happen is that the Liberals will dissolve Parliament. Why else would they push Bill C-64 through so quickly? Like, it literally, today... 
which is October the 10th, it received, like it finished third reading and it received Royal Ascent Just a the few hours exact ago. same day. That's, that's not common, like at all. So I think what's going to happen, I think the Liberals are getting ready to pull the rug right out from under the NDP and they're going to dissolve parliament and call an election because again, they're backed into a corner. They don't want to give these documents over to the RCMP. And if they try to uh, do a motion of closure, that's going to look really, really bad. So I think they're going to do what they did with the Winnipeg lab scandal, dissolve parliament and go to election. Well, the one thing you can count on corrupt uh, liberals of being is consistent. <laughs> <laughs>